Some stories have no winners. Everybody loses. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. There's no we got justice. Just, there's no positive thing that can be taken out of it. There's just stories like that. That's what it is. And that's just what we have to accept. In the story of Michelle Blair, this is one of those. Michelle Blair is a 36-year-old mother of four kids. She had an 18-year-old daughter, a 13-year-old daughter named Stoney, a 9-year-old son named Stefan. And she also had the youngest son, and his name was Matthew. From the time Matthew was a child in diapers until he was six, Michelle Blair says that he was being molested by the 13-year-old Stoney and the 9-year-old Stefan. Obviously, at the times the molestation started, they were not at that age. They were younger. Stoney initially was molesting Stefan and then they turned their gaze on to the youngest Matthew and for six years they abused and gang raped and molested Matthew allegedly says the mother some of the things in which they had done to Matthew was Stefan would pee on him at night rape him with his head face down so it made it hard for him to breathe then ejaculate in his eyes and force him to drink Windex he would also put his genital areas in many parts of Matthew's body and physically hurt Matthew over years Stoney often raped and molested Matthew also She tortured him by forcing him to drink her menstrual blood after she began menstruating and forced Matthew to perform oral sex by sitting on his face. She also physically hurting Matthew and performing sexual acts with Stephen in front of Matthew then proceeded with the sexual acts on Matthew. The sexual acts were discovered by the oldest sister when she saw the two males playing with dolls inappropriate. The sister then told the mother and hesitantly the youngest son told of the acts that were committed against him. Stefan first lied about the abuse. Then he began to tell the truth. For two weeks, his mother, Michelle, with Matthew watching many of the acts over the past two weeks, Miss Blair whipped Stefan with an electric cord, punched, kicked, poured boiling hot water on his genital areas, and made him go unconscious multiple times. On August 30th, 2012, Stefan died. Blair wrapped his body in a blanket and put him in the deep freezer. Stoney, for nine months after, continued the abuse. Blair says she had no remorse. She continued to physically and sexually abuse Matthew. Blair intentionally killed Stoney while she says she did not intentionally kill Stefan. Blair gave Stoney very little food, burned her with an iron on her body, beat her with an extension cord, kicked and punched her, hit Stoney with hot curling irons causing her teeth to break, put boiling water on Stoney and suffocated Stoney with a t-shirt and a plastic bag while the younger brother Matthew watched. Later, forcing the older daughter to put Stoney in the deep freezer 
ultimately giving Blair her infamous name, Freezer Mom. I decided to put this before the video because I'm pretty sure many people are gonna sit here and they're gonna say that they can't believe or understand how this woman could have done what she did. I personally do not think I would have been able to do what this woman had done. I, I just don't think I could have done that to children. But if we're gonna report on the facts, we have to tell both sides of the story. And this is the story of Michelle Blair, the freezer mom. Roll tape. Birds of Six, the confession. A mom charged with killing two of her kids spilled everything to police. Beatings, torture, and murder. She admitted to it all, and we do have to warn you, it is graphic and hard to hear. Seven investigator Jim Kirchner is here now with details only on Seven. Jim. Yeah, just when we thought we've heard it all, this is very, very tough to take. An eight-page confession, handwritten. It is Michelle Blair's story, and her reasoning is twisted and beyond. She's also said this, confessed in court. That's Michelle Blair in court last Thursday, where the state is asking the judge to terminate her parental rights to two living kids, a 17-year-old daughter and an 8-year-old boy. In her confession, she says she killed 15-year-old Stoney Ann Blair and 8-year-old Stephen Berry because they were harming her youngest son since he was in diapers. She said she asked the kids more questions and then, quote, I went back upstairs and started punching Stephen till he said he would tell the truth. How long has Stephen been in the freezer? I want to say two years. How long has Stoney been in the freezer? About one year. She died May 25th, but I don't remember the year. It's a blur. When did Stephen die? August 30th, maybe 2012. In court last week, Blair said Stoney had been harming her youngest son and put poop on his head. Back to the confession, quote, What exactly did you do to Stephen? Punched everywhere. I choked him. I kicked him. And she described scalding him with hot water in the bathtub. She said he died about a week later and that it was witnessed by two kids. The confession continues. At any point did you contact the police? Yes, just to give them, the kids, a scenario about what would happen. If one sibling is abusing another, they would go to juvenile. Did you call for medical assistance? No. Why not? Because I was scared. After you finished holding him, what did you do with Stephen's body? I wrapped him in his favorite Paul Frank comforter with monkeys on it and put him in the freezer. Did the other kids see you do that, put Stephen in the freezer? No. What did you do with your daughter, Stoney? I punched her so hard because she was still doing that to the youngest son. The confession moves through time and details are too gruesome for TV. Did she stop breathing at some point? Yes, that's what did it. That's what I did to kill her. Did anyone else witness this? No. What did you do with the body, Stoney's body? I put her in the freezer on top of Stephen. I didn't wrap her with anything. She later showed the living kids the bodies in the freezer. What was their reaction? The daughter was crying a lot. The son, who is now only eight, was just looking at me and said, you're going to be in trouble. The confession was signed Michelle Blair at 6.51 p.m., about eight hours after her arrest on March 24th. Now, she also said in this, she told anyone who asked about the missing kids that they were living with her aunt, and she told Detroit Public Schools that she dropped them from school because she was moving out of town. But the trial that began today is about the state attempting to terminate Blair's parental rights to her two surviving children and terminate the rights of both fathers. 
An attorney for the state suggesting Stephen Barry and Alexander Dorsey are deadbeat dads who didn't care about any of their children until nine-year-old Stephen Barry and 13-year-old Stoney Blair were found dead in their mother's freezer earlier this year. Investigators believe Blair killed little Stephen first in 2012 and put him in her freezer. Then they say a year later Blair killed her 13-year-old daughter. Prosecutors say her dad knew there was abuse. What happens when your kids come to visit you in 2005? Supposed to get on a bath, seen whips on your back. Who seen whips? My sister. Your sister. Did you see these whips? She showed them to me. Are these long red marks? No, they was healed up by the time I seen them. Healed up. But do they appear to be long, like lines? No, it's like slashes. Another one of Michelle Blair's outbursts came as an attorney for one of the fathers was addressing the court. So I asked the court not to be so inflamed by uh, the mother's actions as to place those on my client. The allegations against my client, Mr. Berry, are failure to protect and abandonment. And then being the key. Mother, 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 listen to me. As they become sick. Real mother, listen to me. No matter how much you lie or how your lawyer lies, you don't know Listen to me. This is a civil case. It's not a criminal case. We can and we will do it without you. I never we will. I did it, but that does not negate the fact that they were never there for their children. I had to struggle with them all the time. They were never there. You get Steve, your you know we had the bag. You mean Steve? All of us used to cry for you. You're not gonna be on the And deputies had to take Michelle Blair out of the courtroom once again. And then there was also a moment when the judge was talking about Blair's youngest son telling a social worker that he saw his mom kill his sister and brother. Blair then blurted out at that moment, quote, he didn't see me kill Stephen because it was unintentional. Killing them. 7 Action News reporter Kimberly Craig is live in the Craig right now with details for us. Kim? And Carolyn and Glenda, I, you talk about heartbreaking. This is probably one of the hardest cases I've had to sit through in my 20 years of reporting. And it was so sad to hear the medical examiner talk about how these children had been beaten and were so grossly malnourished. Even the court reporter could be seen wiping away tears. These are photographs taken from inside the townhouse where investigators say Michelle Blair tortured her children and killed two of them. We're told she first killed her nine-year-old son, Stephen, in August of 2012, and then shoved his body in this freezer. About a year later, Blair is accused of killing her 13-year-old daughter, Stoney, and putting her body on top of Stephen's. Both had, had been slapped in the face. Both of them had chipped teeth, and both of them had actual tears in the mucous membrane or the inner aspect of the lip. Dr. Carl Schmidt from the Wayne County Medical Examiner's Office says it took two days to thaw the children's bodies before he could examine them. And what he found was nothing short of horrifying. On 13-year-old Stoney, he says the blows to her head were too many to count. And actually the entire scalp was, was suffused with hemorrhage, which meant that she had received numerous impacts um, over the head. And then there's nine-year-old Stephen, who we're told had countless burns all over his body. When we see patterns, burn patterns like this, it, it means that there was some kind of object with four parallel lines, which left the brand, it's like branding. Uh, you left that pattern on the skin. In this custody trial, the state is trying to terminate Michelle Blair's parental rights to her two surviving children, as well as their father's rights. The state calling them deadbeat dads who rarely saw or even called to check in on their children to see if they were okay. Before he found out his son had been killed, it had been five years since Stephen Barry had seen his son Stephen. Barry was locked up for a couple of those years, but he was released from prison in the spring of 2013. And he says Michelle Blair only let him see their youngest son and told him Stephen was mad at him. What he didn't know was that Stephen was already dead. I didn't speak to him at all after my incarceration. Why? Because I was told that he was mad at me for um, not contacting him or, you know, being there. 
And that just adds to the heartache for these children. They had been dead for two to three years, and not even their own fathers fought to see them or even talk to them. But now they are blaming, apparently, CPS, Child Protective Services, for not removing the children in 2005 when CPS actually found and determined there to be abuse in the house. One of the fathers, Carolyn, tells me the father of Stoney Blair says he now plans on suing the state. Back to you. Kim, real quick, I mean, we just saw her sitting there stone-faced. No outbreaks today. She seemed so violent and volatile yesterday when she was in that courtroom. She had a couple of outbursts. Um, uh, really, they were, they were rather ridden with, um, with expletives. We couldn't really, it would have been a lot of beeping going on. Um, but nothing as violent as, as yesterday. But you can see when she is sitting there, when she is listening to testimony, that she is angry. She is very angry. She still maintains that she has love for her two surviving children. She says she will always be their mother, but she does not acknowledge the life or death of the two dead children. Back to you. All right, Kim, I know it's a tough case to cover because it's a tough case for us to hear. Thank you so much. Case rocked the Detroit metro community, stunning everyone here, garnering national headlines. Today now, some closure. They said they want to make an impact statement. I actually want to make a statement to them. As expected, the mom who admitted to brutally murdering her two children was not short on words. This time, oh, speaking to Alexander Dorsey, the only father of one of the surviving kids inside the courtroom. They haven't seen them how long? Since 2006. Alexander Dorsey went from 2008, 9, and 10 without seeing his daughters. Blair again ripping up the fathers of the surviving children who they are seeking custody of. And they want to talk about how they love my daughters. Now they want to be front and center, but they was always in the background. As a mother, one of your primary responsibilities was to protect your kids. And in that respect, you failed in the worst possible way. And Judge Dana Hathaway wasted no time in making her ruling. You're therefore sentenced to the Michigan Department of Corrections for the rest of your life without the possibility of parole, meaning, of course, that you will never get out. But like so many in the community, she articulated her disbelief and horror of what this mom has done. Despite what happened to you when you were a child, you had the opportunity to grow up. True. You had the opportunity to become an adult. You had the opportunity to make your own decisions with respect to running your own life. And you, you were blessed with four children. Stoney and Stephen are never going to have that. For a background on this story, just go to our website. We have complete coverage for you there on this case from day one. Our address anytime, WXYZ.com. Outside the Frank Murphy Hall of Justice, I'm Eva Shafe, 7 Action News. Unfortunately, Michelle Blair's children lived a life of horror, all four of them. And even more unfortunate, only two have the possibility to reach adulthood. We like to throw people away in our society that we deem undesirable. There were people that could have helped this family. They didn't. It's obvious that Michelle Blair has a mental disorder. With that being said, many people have mental disorders. It's prevalent in America, in the world, in our culture. It's everywhere. Mental disorders or and or undiagnosed mental disorders, which are worse, exist. And if we're not ready to help these people that need help, things like this will continue to happen. Whether or not those children were doing what they were doing is not the story here. The story is this woman killed her children and for at least two years no one knew. The school didn't investigate. Whatever child protective services that they have in her city didn't investigate. Her family didn't investigate. The, the family on the father's side of these children didn't investigate. Her neighbors didn't notice that two children were missing. No one investigated. 
that's the real tragedy. No one cared. This is Jack Frost over here at BBN, and I'm just going to have to sign out now. I'm going to continue to bring the American Killers series. Because we have to learn as a society to care for one another. And until we do, we're going to have situations where people that are unhinged commit crimes that are so heinous and unbelievable that we won't even be able to fathom how easily it would have been to prevent if someone simply cared.